I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one. If they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. God's good, ain't he? All the time, he is. And he alone is good. And he bless his magnificent name. Hallelujah. Most high, but y'all, we do come to you this morning on this holy Shabbat that you have invited us to, to keep your commandments. Do what is desired of you. Here we are, your servants. You are our master and our king. We humbly ask and request for your leading and your guidance in the midst of this wicked and troubled world. We need sanctification, even more so from the Ruach. Speak to us your words of truth. Pray these sayings sink down deep in our mind and our conscience. Bring about a performance. Bring glory to your magnificent name. That sinners, Goyims, including Israelites, that don't even know who they are, be converted. It's last day and hour. Thank you for the blood. It never loses its power. We thank you for the sacrifice that Yahshua did for each and every last one of us and wrote our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life. They speak to us, Father. We humbly request in the magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. May be seated. All right. Well, it's been a long time since we read a letter. Yeah, come on up, guys. This is a letter right here, a testimony from someone who was at the meeting there in Jacksonville. And um, I was explaining to many of them that you believed that you were healed just because you didn't experience anything right then and there doesn't mean that you haven't been and then I went to the passage of the scripture that says and as they went they were healed so that's a good testimony how you doing long time no see hallelujah so is the mic on Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pull it closer to you, son. Pull it. Hallelujah. Down. All right. Well, with that said, glory to the King. Glory. Gonna read a testimony to the glory of Yahshua, Jesus. All right. Come on, sister. Ask you read. Shalom, Pastor Dow. This is sister from South Carolina. I was the one at the conference with the raccoon purse and probably looked scared out of my mind. Raccoon purse looked scared out of my mind. I don't talk much. Always been a quiet person. I wanted to send you a message. Thank you so much for coming over to my husband and me to talk to us. I really enjoyed getting to finally meet you and other members of Straightway in person. I won't give my full story here because I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know I probably look scared because of how badly I was shaking. My husband and I assumed the PTSD was flaring up. What we didn't get the chance to tell you is that I was in horrible pain. I've had a hip back injury for about four years. It got worse this year. It's been, I've been stuck in a bed since January, barely able to walk. The pain was really bad at the time you met us, and it got a lot worse as we were talking and afterwards. My husband had to pull up the car once it was over because I could barely walk. However, the next day we traveled back home, and I noticed the pain was a lot less severe. By the next day, I was able to touch my toes without any assistance.
And then yesterday, there was no pain at all. After Sister to Sister, the sisters on Skype got to see me walk around the house pain-free for the first time in months. I was hurting so bad. I was hurting so bad, I don't recall everything you and I said to each other. I remember telling you something along the lines of, I, and I know he can heal me. I just didn't know if I believed he would heal me. You asked me why. And I said, because I don't think I deserve to be healed. I was so sad when we got back to the motel thinking I had once again messed everything up and had blown my one and only chance. I'm kind of confused on exactly what happened. The only thing I know for certain is that growing up in Pentecostal Holiness churches and our year in GOCC, I've never experienced anything like what I experienced at the conference. I'm thankful that I got to meet you and that even though I had no idea what was happening, that the Most High decided to heal me so that I can walk properly again. Sorry for keeping you so long. I kept it as short as I could. I hope we get to see you again soon. If it were up to me, I would have been there years ago. Blessings to you and your family. I hope all of you have a wonderful day and shalom. Hallelujah, shalom. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful? Hmm? As they went, they were healed. It's all right, isn't it? Told you, even after the meeting, y'all were still doing, uh, still moving, wasn't it? Hallelujah. Probably plenty more. And then, but we give y'all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Let's get started. There's nothing wrong with the rainbow in Noah's day. But since the um, faggot coalition and all these predators have adopted this little rainbow thing, are you following me? All you need to know, especially your children, when y'all see something like this in this daytime and hour, that means sin. Don't get caught up in the pretty colors. All right, that means sin. Y'all see people wearing these little rainbows with unicorns and all this old other stuff? That means that these people are sodomites. They nasty and vile and disgusting and despicable. And they're going to burn for it. Everybody get that, right? There's nothing good about this whatsoever at all. This is um, a finger, a middle finger right in the face of Yah. And this is Satan sporting himself with all of the people that are deceived by him. Are you following? You know, we got to go in because, you know, we, we, gotta, we probably got to bump our audience today. You know, thank you, Sports Illustrated and ESPN. And I, we want to let y'all know um, that, that we don't believe in fagism. And homosexuals and lesbians and sodomites. Y'all are devils. And, and, and we hate queers. And LGBTQDZBELAB, whatever the hell you are. All of us is an abomination. Brother Shane, get Leviticus 20, verse 13. The word still forever settled in heaven. It's, st it's still right. Ain't it still right? David said, I hate them that hate you. And he hate, and y'all said he hates what a perfect hatred. So it's, it's right to hate what y'all hate. They say, can't they be your friends? Hell no. How can you be my friend when you're an open enemy against y'all? Read, teach. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They have committed a what? An abomination. Read on. They shall surely be put to death. Their Y'all get that? They surely shall be put to what? Death. Come on. Their blood shall be upon them. You see, wouldn't it be nice if we were in our own land? Yes. 
where Yah's law could reign supreme? See, because the reason why they will make an open spectacle of people who have these alternative lifestyles and we will stone them and put them to death is so that if anybody else get any ideas, this is what you're going to get too. You get it? Now, we learn these behaviors because remember, Moses had to write the majority of this Torah because of the abomination of the Canaanites. So we not learn how to do like the nations surrounding us. See, that this is was everyday lifestyle for them. Read on. And if a man take a wife. Did you read it all? Yeah. He did. They both oh, we got to the death part, right? Got That's you. the part I want to get it to, to the death part. Because you read Leviticus 18, it doesn't mention anything about death, it just stops at abomination. So, so we want to make sure we included the death part. But see, here in America, we pass laws, we sanction. Y'all hear me, right? Now, is this not a perverted lifestyle, a perverted, wicked world? You think they celebrate everything that is abominable. You understand what I mean? They celebrate this stuff. Now, you think about this. You got, we got over, right around the corner over here, uh, a, a pedophile a known pedophile and then they wonder why I come out on why I do not speak so kindly to it you understand what I mean can you imagine having a spirit on you the way you see children and you start salivating huh make you want to choke the hell out of them don't it? especially when you think about if it's your child So no, we make sure we put distance between them and the holy and the profane. We, yes, we do. Make no apology for it either. No, you ain't going to be my friend ever, damn it. That pedophile, you know, when y'all come in and y'all see these little, um, little dolls painted up. Now it's got a confederate flag on it. Little Trump stuff. That, that's a known pedophile. He'll pet a he'll predator. Y'all need to know this. You get it. And so today we live in a world where they are expecting everybody to capitulate. To um, either be mute or tolerate that which Yah says is an abominable. Now, homosexuality used to be classified as a mental disorder in the 60s. And you say we're declined or have we evolved? Well, T.D. Jake says he has evolved. That's because he's a sodomite too. Yeah. Y'all getting this? We've seen what happened to the swift judgment of Eddie Long Dong down there in Georgia, didn't we? Talking about he coming back. No, he ain't either. He already dead. And y'all seen what they did, right? They put him up on a a throne, crowned him a king, and walked him around the stage. Sure did. King Sodomy. That's what I call it. Now King Sodomy is dead. That was swift. He went down swift. Y'all hear that? That's swift judgment. Huh? So it'll never ever be an acceptable form of lifestyle. As a matter of fact, fathers, at home, you need to always teach your children how abominable and how wicked and nasty and vile it is. Y'all hear me, fathers? You always teach your children how wicked and vile it is. Anything that is against Yah. And if, they, if your children are out in the public and they're looking at something crossways that looks out of the way, let them say there's peace. Let them go, oh, look, a faggot. That's right, daughter. That's right, son. That's right. What did they call me? Uh, say it again. Faggot. By God, faggot is exactly what you are. 
See, it used to be, faggot used to be a cigarette. But see, now these boogers are smoking and flaming hot now, ain't they? Yeah, we mean to definitely make sure that everybody know that what is, whatever is acceptable amongst men is an abomination with y'all. Don't have no faggots or no homosexual, no lesbian, has no damn friends. Because as soon as you try to invite them over as a friend, they'll try to come in your house and want to be a predator on your children. Even if you let them in your house, that spirit would, they will come in and leave that spirit there. And next thing you know, your little boys want to dress in skirts. And your girls want to be boys. I'm serious, you got to guard yourself. This stuff is for real. I don't give a damn because the Supreme Court said in 2015 that it's a legal lifestyle. The hell with your legalities. They ain't legal here. Y'all begin to understand what I mean about this 501c3 crap? I wanted to make sure, I heard it, they made sure they put that in that article. Well, he is telling the truth. He's not 501c3. You got that right, damn it. Now you tell me that there ain't something behind this. See, when we gonna start learning how to hate like y'all hates and love like y'all loves and really mean it? You understand what I mean? Well, it only go on that. It goes also go for the vile people. Now the Bible says you make friends with unrighteous mammon. That don't mean you go out there and just uh, go out there to the pub and have drinks and carry on with them and stuff. That's in case in the time of tribulation. When you need to have someone to help you out a little bit. See, we're friends with Mr. Phil up here. But we don't go and sit down and drink coffee with him. Is that making sense? And he's a friend of the community, but we don't go up there and sit and commune with him take and have coffee and all this or other. So we don't do that. Long distance, acquaintance. You know what I mean? And so if there come a time that we may need them or they may need us, then we can help each other. Does that make any sense? That's what it means when it says and they'll receive you in everlasting habitations. You may be able to stay in a spare bedroom if your house get torn by a tornado. Just by being a friend. But you better know who they are. Some of your family are sodomites with their nasty, vile self. And you love them because they're your family. The hell with your family. You love them, but I hate them. Look at them. Well, I can't never stop hating my son. What if he's a sodomite? Y'all hate him. What if your daughter's a lesbian? Y'all hate him. Why can't you? Well, you, you know, Christian philosophy. Love the sinner, but hate the sin. Like hell. That's the confusion that they bring upon us. See, again, straddle the fence. Don't call that which is an abomination, abomination. And definitely don't promote holiness. You follow me? I don't think, how many of y'all think the ESPN is going to give me an interview? They ain't going to do it any. You know why? Because they know I'm not no Deshaun Jackson. They know I ain't no Nick Cannon. I'm not going to sit up here and, and then tell you that you're some vile Ashkenazis from the damn Caucasus Mountains, Iceman, Caveman heritage. That you ain't got no genetic link with Abraham. I ain't going to apologize for that. You ain't the people of the book. See, they know I ain't going to, they know I'm not going to recant. I'm going to say it again. Here it is. Now you know, and you're watching the Bible come right to pass before your very eyes. Huh? For the love of money, it is the root of all evil. And some, having coveted it after it, have swerved from the faith. You hear that? 
Y'all getting that? Huh? See, Yahshua said, if you deny me before men, I want to deny you before my Father which is in heaven. See, everybody think about it. You just talking about denying Yahshua himself. What about if you denying his people? Ain't he in us? Is he not the greater one? So you mean to tell me you're going to get out and so boldly speak uh, uh, against this, this so-called Jews? Now they do, they are spoken about in the Bible. They're spoken about in Revelations 2.9 and Revelations 3.9. Clearly. See, when, when they don't have you in your back pocket, you don't have to worry about recanting. See, these riches mean a lot to people. Mean a lot. They have. Mean a lot to them. But see, if you have food and raiment, you know how to be content. You can't be controlled then. You get it? Now, I hear that they have a campaign out there trying to erase all history concerning. Y'all know that the Russians kicked them out of Russia? They were so vile that the Russians kicked them out of Russia and they went to Germany and then Hitler had a problem with them. Huh? That's true history. And boy, as soon as you say something about the Holocaust, people come unhinged and unglued. See, this is what they don't want out. They don't see the, the hour is just like y'all said, is here. We here. We are here. And and real Israel is rising. We here. Because it's time. Y'all hear me? It's because it's time. It is time. And I keep telling you, there's more to claiming to be an Israelite than just dropping off the edge of your lips. You got to receive the culture, the heritage, the curses. Yeah, just not all the benefits. You get, you get it all. You get the persecution. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It all, what interesting times we're living in. Isn't it wonderful that y'all saved us for such a time as this? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then y'all even said that the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. Isn't that something? Y'all thought enough about us. He said, you know what, I'm going to save the best to last. Yeah, the claps went down on that one a little bit, didn't it? That means you may be slated for your head to get chopped off. Now, I don't understand for the life of me, how is it that we can go join the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and Marines, and they can tell you that that's an enemy over there, that's an enemy over there, that's an enemy over there, and you train with passion. Huh? And you go over there and willing to die for this wicked ass country. And then there. And they give you a piece of colored cloth. And your wicked heart strings. For this, but then it come time to stand for your faith. Then all of a sudden, it comes the new philosophy and theology. Start making excuses about standing. Insulate yourself from persecution. 
get at ease in Zion. Hmm? And boy, Brother Galen sent me a picture of that ugly ass reporter last night. She is one ugly ass woman. I'm like, you got your nerve. If you're going to at least come against us, at least have some form of beauty. Maybe the bottom of your feet look better than your face. Should have put that up. Well, damn, she ugly. She smiled, looked like a shark. Y'all think I'm kidding. I mean, her and Eleanor Roosevelt, man, they running. They running close. You know, Eleanor was so ugly, she could stop a clock when she looked at it. That's ugly. Don't get me wrong, everybody can't be beautiful and comely. But damn, everybody ain't got to be that damn ugly either. And you even got makeup and it ain't helping. I mean, you got no excuse today out there in the world where you got Botox, plastic surgery, paint, pig feet. You can put all that hell on your face. <laughs> oh, it's all natural. It's natural when you put it on, right? Shh. Anyway, somebody got to be ugly, though. Got to bring a balance in this world. Hallelujah. Unreal. So y'all need to make sure, fathers, that you tell your children and show them this is an abomination to Yah. And they which do such things will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Y'all hear me? He ain't going to do it. Y'all got that? Teach them so that they'll know. Hallelujah. It's a strange phenomenon. When we read, oh, I did show us that, right? Okay, good. When we read the scriptures, we often only read what we think we already know. Allow me to give us an example. Let me just give you an example here this morning to try to you know, help open our minds a little bit. Over in Better Sheet 2.5, it says, And no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For Yahweh Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So this is what we do in our minds. There was not a man to till the ground, right? The qualifying language that our minds do not pick up on that, the sentence with is this, to till the ground. The only thing that it registers is that there was not a man. You hear that? But the man had a purpose. To do what? To the ground. See, that's when you are exercising self-autonomy. Are you following me? That's when you're really, truly are thinking because you're, you're really, truly reading the whole thing. is not going the way that they have taught us in this abstract world we live in. You get it? They want you to deal with pictures, images in your mind. They don't want you to stay concrete because it would change the way you would approach the scriptures. Our biggest stumbling blocks are caused by blindly following 11 teachings. The 11 teachings of men. Never submit yourselves to any particular teaching authority other than the written word of Yah. Y'all hear me, Israel? Now, when we talk about the written word of Yah, we're talking about the pure written word of Yah. We're not talking about the English version. I told y'all what happened. When Tyndale started this, he translated it, right? And then what people did is after him, they translated from his translation. And then they translated from that English translation. And then that English translation got translated from that English translation. So that's why we always go behind the words. And we define the words from its original language so we can grasp the original meaning. Because if not, the people who wrote these English books... This English Bible right here, they know it. If they put one word in there, your mind will go this way. It'll go right down this avenue because that's the way you've been schooled in that public food system. You've been schooled that way. So why do you think people have so much trouble with us? Because they have an alternate mindset. You get it? 
you have an alternate mindset. All right? Always break the yoke and never submit to the yoke of tradition. Never. Never. Now, killing a messenger. Stating the truth, when most people believe the opposite to be true, usually results in killing the messenger. Y'all get that? See, anytime you stand for truth, when they cannot discredit the truth that you're speaking, the object is, is to kill the messenger. Discredit the messenger. Make the messenger look bad. You know what I mean? And it ain't hard to make the messenger look bad when you have the majority of the people in this world who hold understanding and the way they comprehend things is all alike. Is that making sense? So, I want y'all to listen to me. You, some of you make the mistake of thinking that since you're telling the truth, that you automatically are going to gain these people with the truth. They don't give a damn about the truth. You can sing like a canary with the truth. But if they don't have the spirit of truth, they will not accept the truth because their mind is conditioned to think a certain way. So stop going out there running your mouth thinking that you're going to tell the truth and all of a sudden a light bulb is going to come on. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. I can't even remember what was said when the Most High Yah came and knocked at my door. I just knew that he was knocking. Does that make sense? I just knew he was knocking. And that was the time. I either could have said yes or no. But when he came knocking, the presence was just so powerful and so strong. You had to open up your heart. Huh? Now let's go over a few things here before we really get started, all right? Michael 2.1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. You hear that? That means they sit and think and meditate on how they can work evil against people. When the morning is light, they practice it. Everything that they imagine in their vain heart. Because it is in the power of their hand, meaning that they have the influence and the ability to be able to do it. You get that? And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. You get that? There are people who actually do this. You don't think that people here in America try to figure out how they can go and take other people's lands and minerals and resources? Sure they do. Conquest. Therefore thus saith Yahweh, behold, against this family do I devise an evil, from which ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go haughtily, for this time is evil. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about dedications, okay? But before we get there, we're going to have to get our mind in the right frame. Y'all agree with that? So in Ephesians 2 1, you have he quickened. Y'all get that? He's not dealing with the whole world. And when the Bible says, and God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the interpretation of the day is, is that God loves everybody. But that ain't the interpretation of the whole of the Bible. Y'all don't love everybody. The world that he loved is Israel. His people that are scattered. Why? Because he said, and he came to his own. And his own received him not. And then when his own wouldn't receive, he says to many as received him, to them gave he the right or the power to become the sons of Yah even to them that believe on his name. See what I mean? So you have to let the book define itself and not let outside influences and all these old, because they'll have you thinking that y'all love faggots. How can he love the thing that he wants to put to death and he hates? Don't y'all know how our father is? 
You know how many of our people here annihilated because they wouldn't obey him? But all of a sudden, we hear in Christianity, you got an open pass to do whatever you want because of grace. Mm -mm. But you have he quickened. See, we take this for granted, sitting here today, being on the other side of that camera listening. We take this for granted. Because we see so many people fall away. And the, and the Bible says, you have he quickened, you have he given understanding. You have he dealt with. You, he has opened up your mind. You, he has visited. You get that? You, he has made himself known. You, he has given you his Holy Spirit. That's what this means. Huh? And then he says, who were dead in what? Were we not steep in sin? Trespasses and sin. Where in time past, you walk according to the course of this world. Did you not do everything you thought you was big enough to do? According to the prince and power of the air, Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the what? The children of what? So they are children of disobedience. Isn't that right? See, that's what you once were. Now you understand what it means? They said, but you have he quickened. Y'all get that? See, they had claim over us legally. Satan literally owned us. Among whom also we have had our conversation in times past and in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Isn't that right? You don't believe how much money you'll pay just to fulfill a desire of the flesh. You remember? Before you were converted? Huh? Conversation. Look at this. Behave self. In a nutshell. And of the mind. And were by nature the children of what? Wrath. Wrath. Even as others. But Yah, who is rich in mercy. For his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins. Have quickened us together. With Messiah. They go by your gracious. By submitting suggestions to our minds. To control each one of us. You know I've been on this a lot last month. Really been talking a lot about it. Has it, has it been able to help y'all to wake up. In your mind, have y'all been able to check these thoughts more than what you have been in the past? Rather than just letting all this communication just run and then whatever it suggests and whatever it makes you feel, you just act out on it. You shouldn't know if it's Satan or not because there's a fruit to every damn thing. There's a fruit of the spirit, it's fruit to death. Huh? Life to the spirit, death as well. Y'all get that? Now let's deal with something. We're going to go back and hopefully refresh our mind on this because, again, you remember prior to conversion, you were just driving along, viewing and looking at everything, and, and nothing jumped out at you. Y'all remember that? Now you convert it, everything jumps out at you. Symbolisms, passive communication. Y'all hear this? Huh? It lets you know what people are about. Yeah. Even though they don't communicate it. Yeah? Symbol is an example of communication. Remember the pine cone? What in the world? Is that decor in front of the Vatican right there? I mean, pine cone. Couldn't they put an icicle up there? I mean, what is the significance of a pine cone? And then, even here in this little small town, you can drive past driveways and see these pine cones at the entrance of driveways. Are they there for decor? It used to be decor when you were blind. But see, that's communicating something now. 
You get it? So these pine cones are not there because of the core. You get it? There it is in the Vatican. And look at this. Amazing. Look at that thing. The pine cone. Look at this. And then the staff of Dionysius with a pine cone. So now this pine cone, how this pine cone was way back in antiquity and now all of a sudden it's up here in folks' driveways. What's going on? Think about this. The staff of Bacchus, pine cone at the end of it. The Pope with a pine cone staff. Look at this. See it? Bigger right here. Even in all these ancient cultures, the Assyrian deities, pine cones in their hands, look. The largest pine cone statue in the world, Vatican City. Look at this one. Temple with structures shaped like pine cones. Top of pine cones. The flower of life symbol, pine cone. You get this? See, throughout the span of recorded human history, pine cones have served as a symbolic representation of human enlightenment. See, they're telling you something. The third eye and the pineal gland. See, the pineal gland is, is how you are able to perceive. You follow me? So a lot of times when people talk about sight, it's not talking about what you can see. It's basically what you can discern. That's how you really see. You get that? See, when you hear the scripture quoted, you was once blind. Remember what it said like Paul and scales, it's like scales fell off his eyes. You still got the same set of eyes. But see, what happened is something up here that has changed the perception of here. But they use it as in being enlightened to more evil. Are y'all hearing that? Now this conifer pine trees are one of the most ancient plant. What's that word again? Genera on the planet. Having existed nearly three times longer than all flowering plant species. These symbols are telling you that this family line has been dedicated the demonic powers. So when you driving past these driveways and you seeing these nice little decor of pine cones and stuff, there it's open communication to everyone else whose pineal gland in dark forces has had their understanding enlightened to the darkness of this world. And they're using symbolism to communicate that if you are of the same order, then we're in the same family. And there's passive communication that takes place like this every single day. You can go drive down to any city and you'll see some of the most grotesque things if you just pay attention on courthouses, in churches, especially in the Vatican. They got some vile stuff right there. You don't, you don't need... XXX videos, all you got to do is just go and look at the architect of the Vatican. They'll tell you everything you need to know. That's why they pervert it, because their architect is riddled with, with, with priests and boys. Right out in the open. Some of our family names are literally on the altars of dedication and must be removed. We can serve any and all, we can sever any and all connections and break generational sicknesses and diseases. In other words, there are certain things that our ancestors that have participated in in the past, that they passed down the family line. There are certain diseases that are conducive to this family. Are you following me? Like, for instance, in my family, diabetes run a lot. You follow? I sit there and watch them cut my grandmama foot off, then cut off her leg to heel, 
and then they worked on this and then this one got cut off and then this one got cut off then they finally had to take the whole leg here and take the whole leg there you get it and I said damn I'll be damned if I'm going that way you know how one thing about black folk man they ain't never had it good they only had water when Kool-Aid came on the scene it was over with boy because you know the Kool-Aid pack is about like this and it's got that much red dye in it but to make that little red dye pop how much sugar you got put in there and you know you know you black folk like sweet stuff look at them looking they don't even want to move now and you wonder why you are diabetes or diabetic because you're overloading the system they say in this time we live in now that where's the turn of the 20th century that people would barely even eat five pounds of sugar in a year y'all take care of that in one month some of y'all still take care of that in two weeks and you think you have a sugar addiction when there's a demon in you that's addicted to the sugar you know how I know you can't stop Ain't one of the fruits of the spirit self-control? You can't change your mind anytime you want. As soon as you go for a drink, you want the sweet thing. Sometimes when I'm at restaurants, I purposely order iced tea with no sugar. You get that? Of course, there ain't no demon when I'm ordering a beer. <laughs> you get it? But these are addictions that have been passed down through the family line. Some of you are familiar with what has taken place in your generation. It seems to keep running from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. And this is why I believe where well, contracts have come in. When people have made contracts with demonic entities. And that's why even more so we have to delve into severing these contracts, these agreements. Does that make sense? Sometimes you do it just watch people's behavior patterns. How is a boy or a girl born a sodomite or lesbian or homosexual? They're not. There's something in, in, in the generation spirits that's running consecutively and I might add see people they don't realize that when we're dealing with these ten commandments and the curses run to the third and fourth generation of them that hate him or hate him but he shows love and kindness to the thousand of them that do what love him and guard his commandments if you don't sever and break then it renews itself generation after generation after generation after generation. It don't automatically just stop running. Because if you're in the third or the fourth generation, you continue on that behavior, and then you have seed, it's automatically going to keep going. Is that making sense? Somebody got to have the knowledge of it. Some of us think because we ask the Father for salvation, that we're good. I.e., henceforth, once saved, always saved. So listen to me. Many believe that Yahshua is the Savior. Hear that? That's not the problem. The problem is, he is not master over their lives. See, we want to be saved, but we don't want Yah having any influence in our lives. We don't want him meddling around with our will. Is that right? Why does it get so quiet in here? Luke 6, 46 says, Why call you me Master, Master, or Lord, Lord? Here's the key word. What's that one word, that, that two-letter word? That word right there. And do not 
the things which I see you call me master and master you do it because it sounds good but you don't want to do that's kind of like a wife that will call her husband master but won't do a damn thing he says that's how you bring it home see this is the problem with Christianity they were not going to obey him and some, some of us still have the residue of Christianity still in us what's the difference between savior and master See, when we accept him as Savior, we are seeking the benefits of who he is and what he does. I said the benefits. Bless Yahweh, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Ain't that what Dawid said? Huh? Again, when we accept him as Savior... We are seeking the benefits of who he is and what he does. When he is master, Lord, we are declaring his, say that word. So it shines when you are saying master to your heads, you're claiming that he has ownership. Is that not Torah? Is it not taught? Yes. Over us. So when Yahshua is our master, he owns us. He paid for us. See, we need to get this. Y'all get this? You get this? He paid. You know, we sing these good old songs in Christianity. Jesus paid it all unto him I owe. Don't we? Sound good, don't we? Meanliness. Don't mean nothing if you don't understand what the price of payment is. What it was for. When you came into this enlightenment, when you came into this way, you left one master for another master. Well, ain't nobody told me. Well, you're being told today, then. That's why we continue to keep quoting the scripture over and over again in 2 Corinthians. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Is that what it says over there? All things are passed away, and behold, all things come new. Are they new to you? All things, have they really passed away? Have they become new? See, when you left this allegiance and you came over here, to this allegiance, that means there's a disownership over here. And then there's an ownership over here. You're not your own. You're bought and purchased possession. So if you're not your own, watch this. You don't have your own will. The master don't give a damn about your way. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way up. You know, it's amazing. I remember when I joined the Army. All right? When I joined the Army, first thing they did was they sit me down and they said, so now you tell us, Private Dow, how do you want this Army to run? We're at your beck and call. They called me up for the first Gulf War. And General Schwarzkopf got all his counsel from me. You didn't know that? You better ask somebody. I wrote all of the manuals. I wrote the PT manual. I wrote the training mission for Delta Force. They acquired a me. 
I laid out the Derby Queen. It's the obstacle course down at the Ranger School at Fort Benning. I taught them how to properly jump out of airplanes. Y'all didn't know that? Y'all did not know that. I did a lot at 18 years old. Huh? I actually designed the M16A1, the M16A2, the M203, the R15. I did. I designed the first Colt 45, and I ain't talking about the Billy D. Williams 45 either, the eight ball either. They come with old English eight ball. You know, they used to battle each other, Colt 45 and old English eight ball. That malt liquor. You don't know about that. It's for your time. It's just all right. Y'all didn't know that? Ain't none of y'all believing me though, are you? Good. And ain't nobody believing you and your bullshit when you come over here. <laughs> ain't nobody believing you. Is that making sense? Why? There's already a rule book. There's already an instruction manual. It says rules and guidelines for life. Written by the master himself. Uh-huh. See, what he did was dictate. You know, you ever, you ever seen people, uh, 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 um, an office manager will come to a secretary and say, take this note. And she will begin to click, click, and he begins to talk, right? That's what the Most High Yah did when he spoke to the prophets. He said, now, I got some running notes here I want you to take down. Hmm? And it's his will and testament. Nevertheless, not thy will, that's you. But my will, right, your will. No, it's his will and not your will. But nevertheless, how many times are you trying to make it your will? Uh-oh. Ain't you trying to do it? Look at that. So we got all these instructions, man. So the most high y'all didn't inquire of us when he wrote the Bible. You sure? You positive? Okay. How many of y'all believe me that I wrote the, the, the field manual for boot camp? Nobody? I didn't have y'all going? But my question is, why are you trying to rewrite the Bible? Why are you trying to reconstruct the books? As vain and vile as your life is. Why not just obey what has already been written, been working for centuries? Since he has quickened you. Since he has enlightened you. Does that make sense? Ownership over. So extremely important that he is master over your life. See, this alone places you in a position to break every weight and chain. See, the reason why some things can't be broken because while he may have mastery over this portion of your life because you freely give it to him, but over here, you still the master. And he can't break that chain. He can't break that yoke. He can't take away that weight. Does that make sense? Six forty-six. And whosoever cometh to me, and I put that green highlight up there for a reason. Here's my sayings, and here's the key: when you know you have heard, and do what? Do them. I will show you. To whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and lay the foundation on a lay the foundation on a y'all hear that? And when the flood rose and the steam beat vehemently, streamed it 
upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a what? Now we know he's talking about an analogy of a rock house being built on. But we know the rock is Christ. Is that right? So who are you building this house, this temple, what kind of foundation are you building it on? Well, think about this now, look. But he that hears and doeth not is like unto a man without a foundation built and house upon the what? Earth. We had a brother here some time ago that tried his damnedest to convince me of Cobb houses. I said, I believe it's a good concept, only one problem. What? Where the foundation? Well, you know, he take it, he said he dig down, he put the mud and everything. Brother, where's the concrete? The rock? Something that's going to stabilize this thing. Oh, but it's strong. It's all, I don't give a damn how much insulation value it got. Then he get mad at me. All because I asked one question. What's the foundation? Somebody asked me what's wrong with sticking with the principles of the work. I believe it's probably got the best R value in the world. But what's going to happen when the tornado comes? Or a big heavy downpour. And all that water starts running down the side and ain't no foundation all of a sudden. Uh oh. So he's liking this person is one that hears and doeth not. It's like unto a man with a foundation to build a house up on the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and it ruined. The ruin of that house was great. Luke 8, 30, 8 20. And it was told him by certain which said, I'm, I'm skipping a thought here for a second, okay? Thy mother and thy brother stand without desire to see you. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brother are these which, 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 Who's your mom and daddy? Who is it? I mean, the Messiah said, and my mother and brother are those who hear the word of Yahweh and do it. Ah, but you got an alternative lifestyle, don't you? You got a different perspective. See how much he placed emphasis on hearing and uh oh. You get this? Brother saying, get James 2, 17 through 24. So there is something to hearing and doing. And there is something to hearing and not doing. Is that right? Which one are you? Who are you? Do you hear and do or you hear and don't do? Hmm. Well, you have it, read. Even so, faith. Even so, faith. faith. If it hath not works. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can't we just abstractly just believe it right here? See, that's rewriting the book. So even so, faith, if it have not what? Works. Works is what? Is dead. So there's a dead faith. There's a living faith and there's a dead faith. Is that right? Read on. Being alone. Being what? Alone. I Meaning you can't just have standalone faith without work. It has to be a company together. They both, they join together. Read on. Yeah. A man may say. Hey boy, we know how to talk today, don't we? Don't we know how to talk today? We even know how to deceive people believing and thinking that we're in a certain way in the faith. By our words. Our good words and our fair speeches. Which deceive the heart of the simple. You know right? A man may say, come on. Thou hast faith, and I have faith. works. 
Show me thy faith. Show, show, show me your, now let's, let's bring it up to modern day, your abstract mental ascent, your abstract pictures. Faith. How do you show it? You can't pull an image out of your mind and oh, yeah. put it up in front of someone and say, see, look, here's my faith, look at it. Your faith is best demonstrated in what's being seen physically. So show me your faith. Read. Without thy works. Without nothing to approve it. No works at all. And then he says, And I will show thee my faith by, by my works. By his work. By his what? Works. By his. So when you see faith manifested, it's because something is being done. Not just something believed. You get that? No, we're going to tie this in because it's, it's important to have faith and know what a true confession is of faith. Read. Thou believest. That there is one Elohim. Don't y'all believe that? Read on. Thou doest well. You're doing what? You're doing You're well. You're doing what? Doing well. You're doing what? Doing well. Now, don't get happy though. <laughs> Just because you believe there's one. Because look what he said. The devils also believe. <laughs> and they seen him. Yeah. And they tremble. You get that? <laughs> we haven't seen him and we're not trembling. I think it would be, is there a such word called advantageous? What's the meaning of that word? It seems like it fits to your betterment. Advantageous. See, my vocabulary is extensive. My vocabulary is, man, the shadow of Tao is vast. It covers the realm. <laughs> Y'all supposed to be serious, man, when I say stuff like that. Y'all be mocking at me and laughing at me, man. Read that again. <laughs> Thou believest that there is one Elohim. <laughs> Thou doest well. You're doing well. The devils also believe, and they tremble. Now, wisdom would say, the devil's seen him, they know him, and they fear and tremble. I haven't seen him, and if I don't have fear and trembling in me, I better manufacture something real quick then, huh? I better put some terror of him in me. Isn't that wisdom? I would call that wisdom. You know why? Because the book, the instructions, it said, the fear of Yah is the be of what? Don't you want to be wise? It starts right there. Right there. Come on. But wilt thou know, O oh vain man? O oh, righteous, vain, beautiful, vain, justified, vain, declared righteous vain. man. No, it said vain man, right? Well, you know, O oh vain man. Vain, 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 vain. Man all together vain. is vain. Vanity. vanity. Everything vanity. Is that right? Mm, come on. That faith without works is dead. So you're supposed to know that faith without works is what? Dead. 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 So how many people got dead faith then? You know a lot of mouth professing people, don't you? But they don't do what he says. Dead faith. Huh? Read. Was not Abraham our father? Oh, so we, wait a minute. You got, why you got to go all the way back to Abraham? All the way back to Abraham? Now he's asking a question. We claim to be Israel, right? We claim to be Israelites. We're Hebrews, right? Yes, sir. So he is banking on our memory. Was not Abraham our father? Father of the faith, right? Show us how to have faith. Read. Justified by works. No, he was what? Justified by works. See, I, see the reason why I keep telling you that this institution of Christianity is satanic, though? Yes. They are opposed against Yah's will. So if Yah spoke to Abraham and the only thing that Abraham did was just sit down and listen 
It didn't do nothing. You get it? Y'all were so serious about this circumcision stuff that even Moses, his custodian of the law, hmm, wouldn't circumcise his firstborn son. You know what y'all said he's going to do to him? He's getting ready to kill Moses. Then that rebellious wife, even though she loved Moses, she went and jumped the gun and circumcised him. And then threw the foreskin at Moses. You are a bloody man. Translation. Fill in the gap. What, what kind of exchange is that for the man that God's dealing with? And what does that say about the attitude of the woman? And what does that say about the man? The man's at fault because he cared more about the opinion of the woman. He wasn't going to circumcise. But yet we know the father of the faith received circumcision. as a sign of the covenant. And y'all was letting them know, no, boy, we ain't going no farther than this. You're going to get this, or I'm going to kill you. It wasn't nothing for him to raise up another Moses. He even told Moses, I'll raise up a whole other people from your line. Ain't, no, ain't nothing big for me. See how he bargains? See how he bargains? His way or no way. That's how the most high bargains. So we all went back to Abraham, read. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? See, when, he was justified by works when what? When he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. Woo-wee! Have you fathers ever looked at your sons and, and asked yourself, could you have offered him? That's a test. It, that is a test. Could you try some mess like that today? They got a prison for you. I don't care what God talking to you. Huh? But imagine where that wife had to be at with Abraham to take. You know she had perception to know what well, something's going on. But take your son. And offer him up. What's the significance of that? Most high Yah, even still today, is like he said in his commandments, he is a jealous Elohim. He don't want you loving your children above him. He don't want you to put nobody before him. And yet and still, as false and phony as we are, we do Stage playing hypocrites. And as if he don't see this. Remember, he's the most out of y'all. He tries the reins, don't he? Read. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect? So faith was made perfect when Abraham did something. Is that right? Read on. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed Yah, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. But his belief came at the demonstration of proving that he believed. Our demonstration of proving that we believe hadn't stopped just because we made a confession from the very beginning. It's a test every single day. Y'all hear me, Israel? Yes. Our faith is tested. He's testing us every single day. Every single day. And don't forget, the first and greatest test always comes amongst your natural family. Because that's what pulls on your little heartstrings. And Yah knows that. Come on. And he was called the friend of Yah. And he was called the what? The friend of Yah. Well, look what it took for him in order to get that title. The friend of Yah. Does not Yahshua no longer call us servants but friends? Don't he want us to be friends? 
I said, don't he want us to be friends? Now, whether you want to be a friend or not is another story. But we see what it took for Abraham to become a friend. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on. You see then how that by works a man is justified. A man is what? Justified. Justified by works. Come on. And not by faith only. And not by just believing only. There has to be something to show. Show. Come on. Oh, you good? So, look at what the apostles spoke of salvation. Romans 10, 9. That if you shall confess with your the master Jesus and shall believe in your that y'all have raised him from the dead, you shall be what? This is one of the greatest quoted scriptures in Christianity. And they quote it strictly from abstract and they throw everything else out. The word saved, sozo, means to deliver. So salvation is more than just save you from the damnation of hell. This salvation also incurs in being healed and preserved and to be made whole now. Right now. Are y'all hearing this? See, there's a lot involved in this agreement and what's that word down there? Say that one more time. Contract. See, when we were so-called saved, we enter into a contract. We entered into an everlasting covenant agreement. Well, Pastor, I ain't nobody told me this. Look how many people done broke the contract. When we hear that word, he will never leave me nor forsake me. That means he will never ever renege or deny the contract that he has made with you. Uh-oh. Y'all hearing this? See, this thing runs deeper than just surface level. Comprehension, understanding. The day that he enlightened us, the day that he quickened us and we accepted, we entered into a covenant contractual agreement. Well, I didn't know that. You know now. Huh? For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, what's that word? Pay attention to that word. Because we're going to visit that. Confession is made unto. So salvation is a verbal covenant. Confession. You hear that? A contract. Why? For with the heart, man believeth unto righteous, and with the mouth, confession. You confess. You say. You get that? Why? Because. What you say with your mouth comes from your heart. That is your signature. Y'all hearing this? Y'all see the reason why I'm taking this slow today? So salvation is a verbal covenant confession, a contract. Covenant. Acknowledge, agree. Confession is made. Give thanks. Promise. Promise. See, so confession, promise, covenant, salvation. Look at this. Rescue or safety. Deliver, health, salvation, save, saving. So in other words, there are benefits to this contract. You come in this contract, if you are sick, I'll heal you. If you're diseased, I'll kill it and make you whole. See, the reason why a lot of people can't get made whole because they don't understand the covenant. See, over here, you receive all that shit. He says, over here, you come over here with this agreement, this covenant agreement. Now, here, now it should make sense. You follow me? He's going to wash you. Cleanse you. Is that right? And make you whole. Starting to make sense? Starting to make sense. So now when it says, therefore, many men be in Christ, he is a 
So what he's trying to do is destroy everything that is old. But it's all based upon your confession, which is your verbal agreement to the contract that he's making. And these are his benefits. Bless y'all want my soul for getting all his benefits. Healing, deliverance, salvation, set free. No longer bound. You get it? And this is the reason why that the enemy does everything he can to bind his tongue. So in a righteous order, do you, is your pineal gland being enlightened? This is the doorway and the key to a covenant agreement that is guaranteed by the blood of Jesus. It's passed down just talking as he preaching. What's going on? Are y'all getting this? Salvation is we are agreeing with y'all's testimony concerning Yahshua. Yahshua is the only one who has won the rights in the courts of heaven to own us, own us. Confess also means to agree to the terms of a contract. Teach saying Psalms 103 verses 1 through 3. Are y'all here? Now I'm purposely taking this slow. Because I don't want y'all to get off and start running and everything tastes good and stuff. But then you, you ain't got nothing in your mind. Should taste good right now. You ever seen somebody sit down to a steak and... <laughs> well, maybe summer. Maybe summer. I just... I, I got to take that example back, man. I got to think of something more original now. I ain't kidding either. <laughs> anyway. Read Psalms. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. All right, stop. Now let's go a little bit farther than this. So, this is the poet. Is that right? A man robbed the Yah's own heart. Is that right? Hmm? King David. Do you think that his instructions would be valid today, binding today? Hmm? Bless y'all on my soul. So when you bless, are you not confessing? When you bless, if it's in you, is it not coming from your heart? When you bless, are you not making an agreement? Also in this, when you say bless y'all all my soul, you are commanding all your being. Right. You're commanding all your being right. to be in line with what you're confessing. Hallelujah. Are y'all hearing that? Yes. Read on. Bless Yahweh, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Watch this. What are some of his benefits then? Who forgiveth all thine iniquity. That's a benefit. He forgives us some of them or all of them. All. Now, the only time he can remember them is if you decide to go back and repeat them again. Is that not beautiful? I personally would love him to forget all my iniquities. You, know? you follow me? I like that. Because in the agreement, the contract, iniquity, sins, transgression, he... He, he, he even tells us what he'll do with them. Come on. Who healeth all thy diseases. This is part of the contract. Okay, so if we meet the conditions and the terms of the contract, bless Yahweh, oh my soul. My mind will bless Yahweh. My will that don't want to bend to Yahweh, I'm going to make you bless him. My emotions is out of order with y'all. I'm going to make you bless them. 
all my soul. What are we doing? Whatever we ask, we shall receive of him because now we are the sons, right? So we enter into an agreement by meeting his conditions. And when we're meeting his conditions, he has no choice but to perform what he said. Because y'all cannot lie. Uh-oh. It's going a little bit deeper. Get it? So he's going to forget our iniquities and heal all our diseases. See, this stuff is big. This is really deep. Read on. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? He redeemeth your life from what? Destruction. From destruction. See, Satan has some of you addicted. Bound. Didn't he? And coming into this covenant agreement, he frees you. Take you from a life of destruction. Because remember, whereas before all we did was riotous living. We submitted to the prince and power of the air while we thinking we're in control. You did verse 3? Oh, okay, good. All right. So, the scriptures are a legal binding contract. It's a legal document. This is, I mean, that is to be adhered to. We are coming up under his authority. We're also agreeing to what he has you know there's a song every promise in the book is mine every chapter every verse every line and no anybody don't know these songs but me ain't y'all been churched maybe they weren't paying attention I bet you could tell me a rap song though did he promise healing can he lie See, so it's more than just you confessing and saying because you know it's there. This has got to enter into the heart. And then the will has to be bent towards it. That's faith. Get it? Did he promise deliverance? Did he promise to set the captive free? When he is master over our lives, we also get the benefits of his... Uh, somebody say that. Lordship or Mastership. See, that's the benefit. See, a lot of people don't want that, though. They want the healing. They want the deliverance. They want the captives to be set free, but we don't want him meddling around telling me how to do, how to live, and how to believe, and what I want to do. We don't want him interfering around in our lives. But wait a minute. You've been bought. You forgot. Your price didn't come cheap. Y'all hear what I said? It didn't come cheap. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Psalm of Dawi. O Yahweh is my shepherd, and I shall not. How did y'all do for you in COVID-19? Was you in the food line? No, I'm asking, were you in the food line? Was you standing in line looking for government entitlements and handouts? Didn't he provide it then, right? Is that right? I never seen a righteous forsaken noise begging for what? So what if some people claim to be Israelites but they was in the food line? They don't fit that bill. They ain't righteous then, is they? Uh-oh. Well, we don't get we, it. This is rough going, isn't it? Sorry, folk. You had claimed to be Israel and you was in the government food lines. Then y'all ain't your Elohim. There's a spiritual defect right here that's causing you to not have its benefits. Oh, boy. I mean, we can't take all this food with us if we had to go fly into the wilderness, can we? So we have to depend on him to rain down manna. If he did it once, will he do it again? But you know what? 
That's why in the wilderness, we got to kill all you people that doubt. Because you're trying to keep the benefit away from us. All you murmurers. Yeah, all you complainers and backbiters. We got to do something about you. Look at them looking. If you murmur and complaining right now, and it's green. It's green outside right now. You don't believe me, go outside and look, it's green. <laughs> what are you going to do in the dry? Is all this starting to resonate a little bit, making sense? Is it, is it, is, is it, is it going down in? Uh-oh. David is declaring, as the master sheep, he would not want. When we surrender to the shepherding hand of authority of Yahshua, our every need and desire will be met. Now, now hold, hold, let's, let's get this right now. Y'all will supply all of your, according to his, in what? Glory. Ain't no Lamborghinis in glory. That's a want. Anybody want a Lamborghini? I'll buy you one. Who want one? You want one? All right. Get on eBay. And give me a. <laughs> I'm going to buy him a little matchbox car, Lamborghini, give it to him. All right. He didn't say what form he come in. It's a Lamborghini. <laughs> Told you I'd buy one. Let's see if I make good on it. Oh, boy. See, that's the, our attitude would be if we was out in the wilderness. If y'all don't rain down fried chicken, we complain. <laughs> it's over with. It's a wrap. It's done. <laughs> y'all remember when he gave them meat? They wanted me. Can you imagine eating so much meat that it come out of your nose? See what it means playing around with y'all? Woo-wee. We come to him in a very poor condition. Yes or no? But he, because of his integrity, he heals us. And we are a direct reflection of how he nourishes us and cares for us and by his stripes we are here. Get it? By his stripes we're here. 1 Peter 2.24 Who? His own self. For our sins in his own body on a what? tree that we being dead to what? Sin we should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. You start going out from under this umbrella of protection you start removing God's hands from you because you're reneging on the contract you're reneging on the agreement y'all see how serious this is? But we were as sheep, gone astray, but we are now returning unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. Now, you want me to go a little bit farther? Yes. I just thought I'd ask, because if not, I'll quit right here. Because ain't nobody going to say quit. Then you'll manifest when we know who you are, devil. Isn't that right? And who's going to admit to that? <laughs> Another meaning for the Greek word, homo legego. Best I could do. Confession. We are then placed into the position of his lordship and remove the rights of the demonic claims and prior generational, generational dedications and agreements. See how all this ties in? See, when we agree to this covenant, it is something that should be considered careful. I should put very carefully. You should count the cost. Too many people have an emotional moment, but do not count the cost. 
They're not serious about it. They don't really truly comprehend what's really being done to them at that time. Ever since that one woman who started manifesting and ended up being getting the Holy Spirit, ever since she is, Yah has done dealt with her heart and made her whole. She's done called a broadcast to say thanks. She told them thanks. She has not stopped giving thanks. So she knew exactly what it means to be bound and now she knows what it means to be free. Huh? Because Satan had a soul bound through bitterness. So now she can say, thank you, Yah, for saving my soul. Thank you, Yah, for making me whole. Thank you, Yah, for giving to me the great of salvation. Watch this. So rich and free. What freedom? While the preacher was preaching, the word was coming nigh. Right there at her door. And she was agreeing with everything that's being said. And while agreeing with everything being said, yokes was being broke. Chains was being snapped asunder. And then immediately, with my hands lifted up. And my heart filled with praise. I will bless thee, O Yah. I will bless thee, O Yah. So immediately her hands went up. So I keep telling you, there's a lot going on. There's a whole lot going on. Trying to teach you how to submit yourself to Yah. The real question is, can you win the war? Brother Saint, get Luke 14, verses 31 through 33. Y'all right? I'll tell you what, I'll just go ahead and read it, man. I've got it right here. Or what king? Going to make war against another king. Sit him not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000. To meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sent an ambassador, a delegation, and desires conditions of peace. Now, what in the world is this example right here? Listen to the. Y'all yeah, promise me you're going to listen. All right, so all of you that didn't promise you safe, you ain't got to worry about it. You don't get the benefits. No, for real. You're just sitting there like a bump on the log. Ain't he said all that, and then he said, so likewise. Whosoever be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be my. Now, why in the world would he make talk about a declaration of war and considering and sitting down and, and then end up with this? See, all that you have is it has more to do than your substance. It has to do with your will, your mind, your emotions, your way, your attitude. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm. He's serious about this, isn't he? These conditions of peace is so that we can be at one. So that we can be at rest. And live in quietness. We accept his terms and conditions. We can have anything from him that we want. You know what I mean? He's a father. We're a son. What father are you? If your children ask you for an egg, would you give them a stone? Would you? 
what do you think him? Hey, check this out. He even did this for Assyria. All because of the testimony of a, a little girl who ended up in his house captive. And Elisha sent a messenger to go with him saying, look what he did. This is what he told Naaman to do. This is us. Go and wash in yard seven times and your flesh will be restored to you and be clean. Y'all remember when that storm came the other day and you looked at that pond and it was just as dirty and nasty, looked just like the ground? We'll do better. You get out here to Pumpkin Town Road, right? Lane. You make a left on the Dotson. But before you make a left, you look over to your right. All right? And there's a pond over there. Them cows defecate in it. It's got green algae on it. That'll be like me telling you, hey, you want to be healed? Go get in that pond. Dip seven times. That's how the yard and look. The Jordan look. You didn't think Naaman knew that? Why come I couldn't go to this pristine pond over here? Uh-oh. You know why? Because of the test. That test is easy to get in the air. Go down to the ocean. Dip seven times. You ain't got no problem with that. But we tell you to get over in that water where them cows are defecating and pissing and then throwing up. Every damn snake and skunk and frog and rat and mouse and everything. Go dip seven times. Boy, all of a sudden <laughs> comes, wait a minute, that will that's supposed to be submitted. I remember when dad died, he would go to the doctor. And um, they couldn't do nothing about him. This is over 20-something years ago. And he, his back, just, he just kept on complaining about his back because he hurt his back bad at work. He'd go to physical therapy a whole nine yards. Couldn't do nothing, nothing for him. He came up in line. He said, what you want, Dad? He said, I need my back here. I just, nothing else working. I said, okay, go eat some cabbage. Look at him looking at me, man. I did, I told him, go eat some cabbage. Go ask him yourself. He right down there. He went and ate a whole head of cabbage. You know what y'all did? Healed his back. <laughs> I didn't tell him to eat the whole head. I just told him to eat some cabbage. But man, he believed so much. I guess not only just baptize, <laughs> just, 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 just my body, do my whole head, do everything, just cover it all. I guess he just said, I eat the whole head of cabbage, it's going to get my back healed. His back got healed too. Some of you don't mind eating cabbage, huh? Boy, we tell you, you need to go over there and get baptized and dip yourself seven times in that water. That's when you're being challenged. Huh? See, a prophet in the days of our ancient people were inspired men of Yah. That's what a prophet was. And if the prophet spoke, and then he told somebody to do something, or if he said something, thing didn't come to pass, he was automatically a false prophet. Why you don't see everybody openly admitting themselves to be prophets nowadays? Huh? And your flesh will be restored to you and be clean. That's because there was a prophet in Israel. And wouldn't that be a mess? Don't wait on me because I ain't got no inspiration to go tell you to get in that pool right now. But if I did, I'd send you. If I got one little unction, I'd send you. But Nahum became wroth. You know why? Because he knew how nasty the yarding was. 
Then why would you get mad? Ain't nobody in your country has got any solutions. You get somebody to tell you something, but then you want it your way. Huh? You're going to get robbed and went away sad. Went away and said, see, I said to myself, he would certainly come out to me and stand and call on the name of Yahweh, his Elohim, and wave his hand over the place and recover the leprosy. Who told you the way it's going to be? I got people coming up in line telling me, they come up and, and say, Pastor, Yah told me that this is what you're going to do and this is what's going to happen. I said, okay, where you going over here? Why? Because he didn't tell me. You gonna sit up there and tell me I'm supposed to wave my hand, I'm supposed to do this and, and, and put my hand in and say it just like this and y'all say, and that's the way you're gonna tell me? Nah, man, you out of your mind. Everybody use that y'all tell me stuff as a means of control. Huh? But he had already had a preconceived eye. So he turned and went away in a now I'm gonna ask you, at this point. Is he going to get anything that he was looking for? <clears throat> How many of y'all do that? You got expectations. And you go away in rages. Because it ain't done the way you... I thought he'd wave his hand. I'm sure he would send me to this pristine lake right here. Somebody say the word, somebody say test. test. Is a test easy? No. What about try? Why are we always looking for the easy way in everything? Just by the mere fact of your faith being tested, you're being tried. Your own heart is being proven to see if you're even worthy. surmises and these selective deductions come from? Hmm. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, my father if the prophet has spoken to you a great matter would he not have done it? How much more then when he says to you wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped seven times in the yard. Here it is. According to the word of the man of. Now, guess what? He didn't see no healing after the first dip. I can imagine him dipping and then nothing. He didn't say one time. He didn't say two. He didn't say four. He didn't say six. Again, how meticulous is Yah? So why are we always trying to add to his program? Why are we always trying to interfere and get in the way? Is this all making sense? Anybody of it making sense at all? Have you ever interfered into his program? Have you ever got in the way? I mean, you spiritual. It's got to happen now. Ain't that way some of you are? You so spiritual. You see me walk around nonchalant and everything can on stuff. Go do this. Go do that. Usually people get it when they go do. The ones that don't took another detour, <laughs> went another round another way. Huh? All he had to do was just obey what Elisha said. Even in his stubbornness, he had got some counsel, some people to put him online. Get a hold of him because they knew how he was. Why don't you just go do this? Let me ask you, can somebody even reach you in counsel? If you're earned from the mark and they're trying to put you online, could you even listen? He, he still went and did it. 
And it says, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. You know what that means? That means his skin was smoother than a baby's ass. He didn't have his old rusty, crusty skin like I got. Huh? You know how y'all men, some of y'all feet look like lizards? <laughs> Damn crusty toe jams. He restored them feet, made it look like these little children. They don't need them <laughs> big ass cheese grater. <laughs> cheese graters. <laughs> they have feet snowing all over the place. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I ain't not, you ever see me? With, ain't it painful to try to hold in a laugh? So I said, I ain't got there yet. You coming? <laughs> Obedience will bring healing. But if not, but not if your heart is still not right. Those I said heart, heart, your heart got to be right. You that? Meaning you have a wrong motive. That deceit will keep you from being healed. I wonder what's going on with this thing. Ooh. Proverbs 5.21 says, For the ways of man are before the eyes of Yahweh, and he pondereth all his goings. It's amazing how we have trouble hearing when Yah uses someone like me to speak to you. Or any man of Yah. Notice the little girl gave a testimony, but he didn't call for the little girl. The very purpose of coming to Yah's feast, I gotta hit this because it's coming up, is for us to be examined. That's the three times in the year we get to be examined before Yah. See, I'm literally a student of his word, and I do not comprehend why people make excuses for not attending his feast. They say, oh, well, pastor, we can keep him at home. Yeah, tell the truth. It's all about you being inconvenient, though, isn't it? And then all you get to do is sit back and hear all the wonderful testimonies of what Yah's done. You missed your day of visitation because of excuses. So remember, I'm a pastor that has taught you how to heal, deliver, and set people free. Jesus is the one who actually is doing this. But who is your teacher? So I promise you this. There is more power here at Straightway during y'all's feast than at your home. That's true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of you, boy, the devil got a hold of you as soon as you know it's getting ready to start. Y'all black folk in holiness churches know what that means, don't you? Where you going? I used to call that escaping the anointing. Oh, yeah. So they can stay wicked another day. I remember I was a deacon. Somebody did that. I, got it. I said, wait a minute. I, oh, 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 where you going? Preachers up, preachers. I said, oh, wait a minute. Where you going? Going to the bathroom? Didn't you just go a few minutes ago? Sit down. <laughs> That's the type of deacon I was. I was be a deacon. I know I'll be a deacon. I was a good deacon too. Well, at least in the bishop eyes, I was a good deacon. Everybody else, I was a tyrant. <laughs> All right, come on, keep preaching, man. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. It's a perfect opportunity for you to. And you're going to miss out on it? Because of pride? Anybody ever been punked before by the devil because of pride? Raise your hand. No, I look at that, everybody. See, it's easy for you to put up when everybody else put it up. 
If I just had Chase to put it up, you wouldn't have put it up. Y'all know how these spirits do? Come on. Don't you? Did y'all get anything out of this today at all? Just a little bit? Just a little bit. See, it's good work. Give you a good time to meditate. Isn't that right? Y'all's good. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. I hope and pray that you actually heard, but not with these ears. When it says, he to have ears to hear, let him hear. It ain't talking about this. When it's talking about eyes to see, it's not talking about your regular natural eyes either. I hope you had the ears to hear, and I hope you've had the eyes to see. I hope that the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your comprehension, I hope they were open. Because this right here is the doorway to y'all's benefits. Hallelujah. Let's stand it's real. Y'all's good. We got a wedding tomorrow, right? Glory to King. Hallelujah. We had an old mother passed away up there in Kansas, too. She was 86. How old was she? How old was she? Yeah, she's in her 80s, but hallelujah. She's been here quite a few feet, too. Glory to the king. We, we sure ain't staying here. I can imagine, man. You get like 80-something, man. You ain't trying to stay. Why the hell you want to stay here? You should be looking forward to the kingdom. See, you young, youth is deceiving. You've got you looking at this whole world, no matter how bad it's getting. We can tell you how bad it's getting, but to you it ain't bad. Well, Cynthia, ain't this, this earth done gone from bad to worse since you've been alive? This place is a shithole. And ain't no way you can dress up shit. <laughs> and it's getting bad. Even bad to worse, worse, bad. And it, you, you're just like, how much more worse can it get? Think about that for a minute. How much more worse can it? We, we are in literally in the days of Sodom. Literally. You only think I'm talking about Sodomites. Do we not have an, an abundance of time? Do we not have idleness of time? That was part of Sodom's problem. They had too much time on their hands. They loved the life of enjoyment and ease. And then at night, They'd just be sodomites. Amazing, huh? See what an idle mind would do? We would get you. Most high be y'all. We do thank you for all things you pray. You're saying, sink deep down our heart in magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. The king is coming. Look at him looking.